What would you uh, say is the best martial art for self-defense, uh, especially like in a street fight situation? What would you uh, say is the best martial art for self-defense, uh, especially like in a street fight situation? Okay, so street fight, right? So this is going to be a bit of a long answer. Um, short answer, I'm going to say, you know, you have to be aerodynamic grappling in specific uh, aspects of Muay Thai. I'll explain. So, you know, you think about a mixed martial arts match, right? And you're going to say easily, what are the best you know, one of the best uh, martial arts for a mixed martial arts match, right? Like wrestling, right? Because the rules favor wrestling. You have jujitsu, obviously. You know, you need to know how to, sub you know, submit the guy or finish the guy on the ground. You need, like, some type of striking. So, let's just say, you know, boxing or what have you, right? I'm just throwing it out. So, mm -hmm. there are a lot of control variables in a, in a mixed martial arts match, right? right? Mm -hmm. So, um, there's so many different ways to win, but for the most part, like you have gloves, you have a mouth card, you have a cup, you're in a cage, you're, you know, I'm not sure the size of the octagon, but that's already predetermined. So you, there are a lot of control variables, but in a street fight, think about, you know, the number of independent variables that you see in a street fight, right? Like, are you, where, first of all, where are you fighting? Right. Are you fighting on, on a, in a field? Are you fighting on cement, you know, in a public road? Are you fighting on marble tiles in a store? Like, First of all, where is this street fight taking place, right? So all of a sudden, if you're fighting on concrete, that's going to limit the type of takedowns that you do, right? Like, you're probably not going to, you know, shoot for a double leg on concrete, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, so, you know, maybe you're more inclined to shoot one in a, you know, in a grassy field. Right. In the park. That, I can see that happening. But, so you have to look at, and then, like, you know, you have to look at other variables, right? Like, where are you? Are you in a desolate area? Are you are you positive that you're alone with that other individual? Right. Um, if you're alone, you'll be more inclined. You know, is there CCTV footage? Do you have? Is there is there a crowd? Mm -hmm. Do you have to account for maybe people in that crowd that you know your assailant might know? So maybe there's a certain decorum, right? Because if you're if you know that there are cameras, probably you need to. Sh and, you know, you need to show that our witnesses in general, like you have to show, show that you're not the aggressor. Right. Yeah. It, it, you have to convey that it's self defense. And so you have to, if you, you might have to let that person be the one invading your space or, you know, appearing as the aggressor before you can make a move. Right. So obviously, you know, you want to keep your hands close to your face, even if it's like this, something subtle, because you don't, ever want to have a point where you're moving your hands from um from a resting position all the way up to block something mm -hmm. yeah you know yeah that makes sense so mm -hmm. so you you know you have to keep that you know in account does the person have cauliflower ear if you're if he has cauliflower ear and you're you know you have six months of grappling experience do you think it's a good idea to <laughs> to try to shoot for a takedown no right, <laughs> right. and you then know? also the the variable of a weapon yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, if, yeah, it's it's a weapon, and you know, you, in you know, are you in a concealed carry state? Or, you know, it, right. So many variables. So, so yeah. but let's just say, let's just say, if you're in a situation where the thing, like you know, if you're dealing with multiple attackers, right? Then I think so. Let's start with multiple attackers, and because I think it will also translate well for a single attacker. Mm -hmm. Well, my my answer at least. So obviously, you need to know how to grapple because. At the end of the day, when you know how to grapple, if you get taken down, you fall down, you can then you can get up. If someone's there and in a situation where seconds matter, you need to be able to get up quickly. Right. Or um, if there are multiple attackers. And my opinion is if you're facing multiple attackers, first of all, it's not as if, you know, like um, the chances of you winning with each additional attacker is exponentially harder, right? Like, mm -hmm. If there are two attackers or three attackers, it's, so much harder to win that fight. So, and one versus two, right? It, it's much, much harder to win. So, you have to look at it like this. You, if you're, if you have, let's just say, two people attacking you, you can't count on a knockout because you know a lot of fighters will tell you like it's usually the punch that they that they didn't expect would knock the other person out is the one that knocks them out. 
Right. And they said, well, I threw harder punches in that fight. But it's just that one punch that they didn't see coming. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, the, the opponent didn't see coming. And then they themselves, the fighter, didn't think would knock him out. It was the finishing blow. So you can't rely on that because, you know, they might close the distance on you. They'll try to swarm you and try to grapple with you. Mm-hmm. So my opinion, my opinion, I think leg kicks, um, especially cab kicks, mm-hmm. are very effective in, in a street fight, especially against multiple attackers. Because, you know, I'll just give a personal experience. Um, when we were doing uh, like <clears throat> MMA for a little while, right, and uh, my cousin and I, so we went to a mixed martial arts gym, and um, you trained with us a couple of times. You can probably tell the story, but um, what we so one of the sparring sessions that I had, I went up against a guy that was throwing a lot of leg kicks because I was getting the better of him in boxing, but because when he was playing my game, but then they said, "Hey, stop boxing with him." Um, my coach was like, "You know, he was you know throw kicks at him." So what did he start doing? He threw leg kicks. The first one, the very first leg kick I felt, complete shock to the system. I didn't expect it. But I was like, okay, I can deal with this. Like, it hurt, but it wasn't, you know. Right. Uh, like, I'm not, you know, um, it, it's, it, I can tolerate pain. It's not, you know, it's not like if I would get hit in the face or what have you or hit the body shot. So then he threw a second leg kick, and I didn't know how to check it maybe about five, six kicks into it. Mm-hmm. My leg, like, at that point, I couldn't really put weight on the leg anymore, the lead leg. Mm-hmm. So, at that point, I had to, I, you know, I think he threw one or two more kicks, and at that point, I had to, I had to switch stances. Right. And I'm, I'm a natural child, Paul, I had to switch to orthodox. I didn't know how to really box orthodox, but at that point, I just couldn't put weight on that leg, which I initially, you know, did as a southpaw. So, imagine throwing calf kicks or leg kicks against someone, and yeah, adrenaline is flowing, right? Because you know, there's there's a lot that can happen, you know, during the street fight when um, the adrenaline is flowing. But if you throw five, six leg kicks at a person, what at some point it's going to it's going to pay dividends because at that point right. they may not be able to put weight on it, and it doesn't take very long. Right. Even if they don't so, feel it, they won't be able to uh-huh. use it effectively. Yeah, and all of a sudden, if you throw leg kicks at that person, maybe three or four, and then you throw three or four at another opponent, um, you know, I'm not going to tell you that you're going to win the fight, but you know, I think it'll, you know, I think at the very least you can outrun them at that point. If you, yeah, if you need slow to them escape. down and kind of get out of that situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because, you know, at the end of the day, Street Fight is about survival. You're, you know, you're not trying to, you know, you know, winning a Street Fight would be to, in an ideal world, is, you know, you know, finishing the guy and getting, you know, and not getting in trouble with law enforcement. That's right. the ideal scenario. Right. And, you, you know, obviously you're not taking any damage. So, yeah, so when you're going up against an opponent, let's just say a single opponent, then... I think, you know, even if it goes to the ground, right, even if you take it to the ground and you know that, okay, maybe this, there are no spectators so, and you don't see anybody else in, you know, the immediate vicinity that you think would come in to, hit, to help them. So at that point, if you decide to take them down, because then you have to assess the fact that there's a risk if you get into a boxing match with him and you, you know, you, you punch him so hard that, you know, he breaks a jaw or he gets knocked out and his head hits the pavement Mm -hmm. but if you can you know take him down and choke him out or what have you then that's you know he's gonna have a hard time building a you know well his defense team's gonna have a hard time building a case against you right because you're the aggressor Mm -hmm. yeah you already weren't the aggressor yeah uh wasn't there like a similar story with um uh this guy in new york city maybe like sometime last year i can't remember when uh, he was a uh, jiu-jitsu black belt, guy, right? right? He was a black belt. He mm-hmm. uh, stopped this guy and basically just sort of mounted him or maybe took his back and just held him until the cops came. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. That's the first time. Yeah. That, I mean, you know, in an ideal world, that'd be great, right? Because mm-hmm. if you feel that, 
you know, you're stopping a criminal, you know, sure. But a lot of times it could just be someone that, you know, maybe, you know, said something, you know, looked at you the wrong way and then made a comment or he, you know, said something about your girl and, you know, you can't let that slide. Because there's not certain things, you know, you can, there's a lot of things you can let slide. But I think if somebody were to insult, like, you know, your child or, you know, your spouse or what have you, this, you know, there's a certain level of pride that's going to come into play, right? Right. And you're not going to want, you're not going to want that. Right, right. So yeah, so mm -hmm. so some type of grappling and Muay Thai or uh, leg kicks, basically, those would be yeah. your ideal, ideal martial arts or ideal things yes. for street fights. And one last thing about that, I think you know a lot of people feel like okay, blue belt. Like I know Helio Gracie said that blue belt. The definition of blue belt is someone that can you know that can beat someone um, <clears throat> that's you know of a reasonable, you know, size larger than them, right? So, like, if they're maybe within, you know, 40 pounds of them or so, then mm -hmm. you should be able to beat them in a grappling match. Now, I don't think a blue belt is necessarily enough in a street fight because I think seconds matter right. in a street fight. So, like, the difference of, like, hitting a submission, like, and look, I, I think a blue belt could be enough to win the fight, but I think, you know, you, you know, I think time is important. Mm -hmm. And I think you need to get out of that situation as quickly as possible. So I think you should, the more you train and the further along you are in blue belt, then I think a middle, you know, middling blue belt might be, I would say, the bare minimum in order to feel confident against an untrained opponent. Right, right. Yeah, that's fair. Um, you know, speaking of the uh, streets and uh, fights, what do you think about cops learning some type of grappling or them, you know, sort of like grappling be a, being a requirement for them to be a cop? Like, what is your thoughts on that? What are your thoughts on that? I think, I think it's absolutely necessary. And Well, let me say this. I, I don't like to see police officers, you know, attack civilians for nonviolent crimes. So, you know... In that event, then no. I mean, obviously, other than theft, if, you, if you're trying to steal from, but you know, we obviously know that, you know, New York and San Francisco, they don't really go after you for theft, right? So, uh, you know, so um, yeah, like, uh, so for that reason, I mean, you know, you're, but I think, like, let's just say, assuming it's a legitimate crime, you know, legitimate crime. And that person needs to be detained. I think it's absolutely essential. I don't understand why police officers don't train. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, I, I, you know, I hear like you know, I astounded. You know, I like just seeing videos of police officers. You know, I seen like two, three police officers at, at a time, like trying to subdue an opponent, and yeah, that guy's able to get up and run away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that was like a recent no. one too. Get out of. Yeah, what was that? No, no, I said uh, there was also like a recent one where uh, I think the guy got into a car, right? And then he like, he, like drove off. <laughs> and, and the level uh, of yeah. disrespect. Yeah. You know, to, to say, listen, not only do I not respect you, neither, either, either of you three being able to <laughs> hold me down, but I'm just going to get into my car and drive off. He didn't even run away. He yeah. didn't run away. No, he got into his car and drove off. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like it definitely probably, should be a requirement for them. Those cops were so slow, I could swear that he was adjusting his side mirrors, too. <laughs> he's like, yeah, he's, like, fixing his like, rear view mirror, you know, like... Yeah, he, he had the time. I think he adjusted both side mirrors, <laughs> the left and the right. He, he had all day Yeah. to, to, to escape that situation. Yeah, I, yeah I, I don't know why they... You know, they don't include some type of grappling with their firearms uh, training. Because I feel like that would help their firearms, uh, you know, like drawing, you know, uh, basically like if someone tries to grab their gun. Because at the end of the day, you're going to have to grapple if somebody tries to grab your gun, right? So mm -hmm. I, I don't see why it's not like part of it. Yeah, I, I think with the, a lot of police officers, I mean, you know, they're not pressure tested so if they're not in a situation where like imagine you know going to jujitsu class and i mean obviously i'm not gonna say that you know let's just say a shootout happens that that's not as intense as a you know as a jujitsu match no i'm not i'm not saying that but right. i'm just saying that you know i think you know being in you know ex being exposed to high pressure situations like a jujitsu match might help them 
with their nerves because you know there are a lot of trigger happy police officers right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. how many you know unjust police shootings would you see a year and i'm not going to say it's predicated on race or anything but that's, that's another story i'm just saying in general police officers can get a little too trigger happy can pull the gun in situations that don't warrant it like i've seen a video recently of an individual telling the police officer you know that he had a gun you know he had a fa- registered firearm that is in the trunk of his car and he was trying to exercise his rights right. but then what happened right like the cop in that situation reacted poorly pulled out his gun immediately because the person was not immediately complying with what he's saying he just wanted a rationale he was like listen i you know i understand my rights i you know x y and z no but the police officer pulled out his gun mm-hmm. yeah i think his uh, mm-hmm. family was uh, in the car right uh, oh, this was a different situation. I think you were thinking, what was it? Um, Orlando. Was it Philando Castile? I think yeah, that one. Yeah, that's the one I was thinking of. So, his family was in the car. Yeah, he, this was where he, this was another situation he had this was a few years ago. Okay, yeah. He um, mentioned that he, you know, he had a gun in the car, and then he said he's reaching for his license and registration after the cop asked for his license and registration. Oh, that's, okay. And yeah. then the cop pulled out his gun and said... <clears throat> You know, don't reach for your gun, and then or something like that. Don't reach for your, and then, yeah. I think he said something like, "Don't reach for your gun," or and then the guy's like, "I'm not," and then he just fired several bullets, killing him in front of his his family. Like appalling, you know. It's yeah, police officers. Yeah, yeah. I they, think, they, like you said, I think some type of grappling will give them a level of pressure testing that they may not be uh be used to i feel like even like wrestling like even if you you know take wrestling i feel like it would probably help Mm -hmm. i mean if you know the you know the individuals unarmed right Mm -hmm. or they that they say like they have a gun in the car you would assume that they're not if they're you know providing you with that information then i don't think you need to be in like you don't need to have make it into a high pressure situation right it you know you don't have to take it to a 10 Right, you can keep it at a three or a four. You can raise your, you know, raise it, and you know, maybe certain red flags might go off, and then you, you know, but at that point, that doesn't mean you have to draw your gun, because I feel like as soon as you draw your gun, a lot of times they're inclined to use it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah.